Nope. I live in the mountains in North America. That's as specific as I'm willing to get. I have long adored the outdoors, even moving back here after a stint in the city. Long hikes up in the mountains were great for stress relief, not to mention for strengthening your core. The hills actually start sloping upward about 100 feet from my house, but you have to cross a small creek to get to them. It's all truly beautiful. Or, well, it was, anyway. Something happened tonight. My love for this area is gone as of the past few hours. I'm going to attempt to leave my home at sunrise. Let me explain why. I live by myself in a trailer I bought four years ago. Being a naturally social person, I regularly invite friends over. Jared was one of them. He was just as outdoorsy as me, and we often went hiking on weekends, or did a little bit of small game hunting. Well, Jared came by unannounced this evening around dinner time, and brought with him two pizzas and a case of soda. When I looked out the window next to my front door to see who had been knocking, there he was with a sheepish grin on his face. He yelled through the door, asking if we could watch the college basketball game that was on tonight. He was a diehard sports fan as well, and never missed a game from his favorite team. Not in the five-ish years since he became obsessed. So, we sit around eating pizza and getting into the game. You know, typical sports night stuff. It's getting late now, around 11 p.m., and it's already pitch black outside. The game is over, and we're both winding down from the excitement. I turn off my TV, and we sit in my living room chatting. The room is quiet, and we can hear the normal outside noises through the thin glass of my windows. You know, bugs and owls, that sort of thing. That's about all the noise there was besides us talking. In the middle of our conversation, I notice Jared stops looking at me and instead begins staring at the window behind me where I was sitting. He trails off from talking about how his team is going to crush their biggest rival in three weeks and just sits in silence. I'm a bit confused now and ask if he's okay. That's when I hear something odd. It sounds like someone is talking in a low voice outside my house. I turn to look at the window, but I can't see anything outside. I ask if Jared heard it. No response. In my peripheral vision, I can see that he is now in the process of standing up. Good idea, I think to myself. We should go check it out just in case. I'd never had a problem with trespassers before, but I wanted to deal with it while I had Jared to back me up. Turning to face him, however, left me unsettled. He was now standing, eyes wide with what I can only describe as a vacant, yet horrified look. The best picture I can draw for you is by imagining a corpse in a morgue that has somehow had its eyes widened in a look of shock. That was Jared's expression. Keeping his head turned towards the window, he turned his body and began walking toward the front door. Uh, dude? Are, are you okay? I asked. He shuffles over to the door, still staring at the window, unlocks and opens it, stepping into the cold night air. I followed him outside, very concerned at this moment. His body continued to make its way along the porch and then around the corner of the house, 
walking in the direction of the hills, while his head continued to face the same way it had been. At this point, I thought he might have been having some kind of seizure or nervous episode. I ran up and grabbed his arm, trying to guide him back toward my house. He was shockingly strong though, in hindsight, unnaturally so, and managed to escape my grip with little effort. It was at this moment that I realized something. I could still hear a voice, somewhere. It was more like a whisper now that I could hear clearly, and it was coming from somewhere up in those pitch black hills. Its echoes weaved through the trees and around boulders, and I could tell that its origin was somewhere much deeper within that range. It was unnatural. Merely hearing it seemed to make my insides shrink and caused a deep dread to overtake me. Jared was now splashing across the creek, getting his pants soaked in the process and clambering up the slippery bank opposite. He began flailing his arms, trying to cut through the brush that had restricted him on the other side. He still had said nothing, and did not make a sound, even when he got tangled in a briar bush, and finally wrenched himself free. In that moment, the full terror of the situation hit me. I knew I had to do something to stop my friend. I ran back inside, a cold sweat and goosebumps beginning to cover my skin as I could still hear the whisper, which now sounded more like moaning. I grabbed my hunting shotgun from my bedroom closet, which I always kept loaded in case of intruders. It has a flashlight which fits near the end of the barrel, allowing you to shine the light and aim the gun at the same time. By the time I got back outside, Jared was gone. I rushed around, pointing the light in the direction that he was last heading, but I saw nothing. It was eerily quiet now. A slight breeze rustling through leaves was the only sound I could hear. Have you ever had one of those nightmares where, for some reason, you have to run through some haunted or evil place? And in the dream, you spend what seems like hours debating whether you should do it. Then finally, you decide to make a mad dash to the end, and you can feel yourself hyperventilating, and a cold chill grip you as evil moves in to take you. If so, then you know how I felt in that moment. I knew I needed to go after Jared, but it took a minute for me to muster up the courage. Finally, I leapt across the creek and scrambled up the embankment, then trudged through the knee-deep weeds to make it to the foot of the hill. I shined my light in front of me, and occasionally up the hill to see if my friend was there. He wasn't. I climbed, or more like stumbled, up the cliff the darkness making it difficult to see where the footholds were. The feeling of dread didn't stop. I slipped many times and scraped my ankle pretty bad. When I finally reached the top of the first hill, I paused and listened. There was nothing at first. Then, after a few seconds, I heard what sounded like dragging through the woods. It was about 50 feet away. I crept up slowly with my gun and light pointed toward where I could see some tiny movement in the leaves. It's going to be a struggle to type out what horror there was. Dear God, I don't think I can handle this. I'm, My fingers are refusing to type. But I... I will persevere. I found Jared. Or, well, maybe not. I don't know. When I got close enough to the rustling leaves, I saw, 
a face. Jared's face. It was sticking out of the ground with the same look of vacant horror, except his eyes were lifeless. You couldn't see the rest of his head as it was submerged underground. His lips began to move, and strange guttural noises were all that came out at first. The horror of that sight broke what courage I had mustered and sent me fleeing back down the hill in a blind panic. I began to hear the same whispers coming back from where I had discovered Jared. My vision blurred, and I got torn up pretty badly, but managed to hold onto my gun and crawl through the creek and back up to my porch. My muscles refused to cooperate, and it took me a minute to wrench the door open and fling myself inside. That was two hours ago. In the meantime, I've been able to lock my door and find my phone, which is what I've been typing this story out on. I refuse to call the police. I'm not about to bring them here to suffer a fate worse than death. It's about 4.47 a.m. now. Maybe, if I can hold out till dawn, I'll be able to get out of here. I'm too scared to go out in the dark. I know it's out there. I can hear rustling outside of my window, a hushed moan, and thuds against the walls. Hello, dear listener, and thank you for joining me in this week's video. If you enjoyed it, slash that thumbs up button, subscribe for future videos, and turn on that notification bell so you can be alerted whenever there's a new upload. Be sure to check the description of this video if you want to get in contact with the author of this story. There is a link to their Reddit profile. This Thursday, I'll be uploading a special Thanksgiving bonus video and also episode 5 of the podcast, which will be Thanksgiving themed, so be sure to check back for that. Also, here is the question of the week, since I've neglected it in the past several videos. <clears throat> Would you rather be stuck in a trailer in the middle of nowhere, like the person in this story, just a shotgun with some evil force circling you? Or would you rather be stuck in an abandoned building in the middle of the city during the purge? So, I mean, I guess it depends. Are you more scared of some evil force or a bunch of crazy people willing to do God knows what? Anyway, everybody, until next time, remember to stay safe out there. I'll be seeing you in the next video.